Welcome to the award-winning Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashner, covering metaphysics, ETs, shamanism, and channeling. Here you will find spiritual inspiration from today's thought leaders, along with cutting-edge insights from our interstellar brothers and sisters and ancient shamanic wisdom. Now, here's a new episode of Dare to Dream with your host, Debbie Dashinger. Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. It's wonderful to be here with you guys again, beautiful people. And today I'm going to be speaking with Lori Spagna. She is a best-selling author, speaker, ascension guide, multi-dimensional channel, animal communicator, and energy healer. She assists people to awaken and live their best life ever. And she is completely tapped in to the other side and the unseen. Dare to Dream podcast won three talk radio positive change awards, won the COVR award for best radio podcast show. Welp Magazine named Dare to Dream one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year, and it is high ranking in self-improvement on Apple Podcasts. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do energy work out in the world. You can join them anywhere. Go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R dot com. Hey, if you're with me on YouTube at youtube.com slash Debbie Dashing or something brand new is opening up, please hop on. Go to memberships and join because very soon down the pike. Not only will I be interviewing the guest, but there will be a break after the live public interview. And then for members only, we will be doing a Q&A and it will be your turn to ask the expert, the guest, who I am featuring the questions you would like. And I'm sure they will also be putting together some kind of special offer so you can work further with them if you choose to. So again, join me on youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger and become a member. Also on YouTube, you will find out I now have Dare to Dream Galactic merchandise. Super excited about that. I've been actually ordering them myself. I've gotten a hoodie. I've gotten coffee cups, <laughs> tank top, t-shirt, true story. So go enjoy yours as well. The designs are gorge, really lovely. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I'm a book writing coach. I am also somebody who takes your book to a guaranteed international bestseller. And if you need PR work, specifically getting booked on podcasts, you can reach out to me. And I also have a gift for you. If you'd like to learn how to become way more visible in what you do, it is your time to write your book. It is your time to be interviewed. So learn how. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. That's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R com slash gift. My guest today and I are going to be presenting with some other very notable people on a seven-day cruise. That's in December, and it leaves out of Florida going to the Yucatan. Super excited. So Lori Spagna and I, Debbie Dashinger, you can join us for an un- forgettable journey to the wonders of the Yucatan. Other presenters are people like Jerry Sargent, Sarah Bressman Cosme, Laura Eisenhower, JJ Hurtak, JK Ultra, Debbie Solaris, Vivian Chavez, Neil Gar, and more. So secure your seat on the Galactic Origins cruise. Say yes to a phenomenal experience with great presentations, plus excursions to Belize, Honduras, and Mexico, plus beautiful days at sea. And hey, there is a special discount when you cruise with a friend. So on the registration form, you're going to need to click on a name that referred you in here is Debbie Dashinger and Lori Spagna today. These are going to sell out, so definitely book today for this incredible workshop and seven-day adventure. Go to galacticorigin.com. That is galacticorigin.com. So my guest, Lori Spagna, she is here to help spiritual seekers to heal be, do, achieve, and experience what their soul truly desires. Lori herself radically transformed her life after a series of near-death experiences and an induction-abduction experience while living in Maui. 
She's a best-selling author who for over 20 years has transformed the lives of thousands of humans and animals. She offers seminars, workshops, and provides ascension training and channeled guidance. Lori is perhaps most well-known for her recognition of the deep and intimate animal-human connection in terms of how animals mirror their humans' behavioral, physical, and emotional tendencies. Lori also leads powerful DNA activation events, sacred government circles, and animal energy healing circles, where she assists people and their pets to improve their lives by tapping into their true power by way of the universal source which exists within and connects us all. You can find out more about her at lorispagna.com. And with that, I invite the amazing Lori Spagna to Dare to Dream. It's so good to have you back on the show. Hello, Debbie. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited about our time together today. Yeah. You originally... I don't know. I've been doing this almost 17 years. So you came on a long time ago, a couple of times. And so it's like, it's so great. It's so great. You're not only doing what, still doing what you do and doing it so well and so big out in the world. So yes, I want to ask you throughout this, I want to weave some questions to get more clarity in, but I also want to do some of the big yummy points that you're so good at. I know part of your story is that your brother passed. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's a very traumatic thing to have happen. And that was decades ago. And when he passed, that's when your whole experience and gifts started coming online because you began having communication with him and saying, am I crazy? Is this real? Okay. <laughs> and of course, we know that was not. But today, do you still have communications with your brother from the other side? Oh, not so much anymore. Very almost really not for years now, actually. Uh, the last time he came in, I'll share this with you. It was pretty interesting. I was in yoga class at the, this was, this was at least five years ago, I think. Um, yeah. Cause it was before I left Florida, but the, um, I was in Samadhi, like in the Samadhi and all of a sudden out of nowhere, it was like, I heard him, saw him, like I was in the zone. And and I said, where have you been? Like, well, I thought maybe you reincarnated. And he's like, let me tell you, I did reincarnate as an unborn fetus into the mother's womb of a woman who was highly religious mm -hmm. and knew that it was not a right time for her to have a baby. And she was in, she was tormented over her, over this choice she had to make because it was against her beliefs to terminate a pregnancy. And I learned from her in utero, the value of life. And I paid off my karma by helping her. And I, I just, even that those words paid off karma, please understand that's loaded right there. But for him, that's how it worked out for him in his experience that he got to work through that issue and learn from her the value of life. Mm, powerful. How beautiful that is. Yep. And, and okay, was there more when you connected with him? Well, I mean, there was that story, you know, like, you know, that what now he was back in the non-physical and he had memory again of his other incarnated, you know, incarnations. It wasn't just the one he had with me, but he was still identifying through the conversation with me in that moment. Because he, see what happens when we transition, when we humans and animals too transition, we drop what's called the crystalline body. The crystalline body is made up of more than just our physical body, more than the electromagnetic body within us. It's made up, it includes our mental body. It includes our emotional body. It includes our auric field. It's a lot of layers of the multidimensional aspects of who we are. However, until we're resolved, as a unique individual being from any lifetime, once we're resolved, we, we we drop it all. But if there's something that's unresolved for us, we can carry it over or work with it in the non-physical. So in a sense, that's what he was doing. That's what I understand from him, from that communication. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. That is so beautiful to have that check-in yeah. and to yeah. learn that 
big piece for him. I'm sure you were his biggest cheerleader in that moment. And I, I think I was just, so, I was so blissed out and I was so like, it's, a samadhi. So, <laughs> it's so altered state when you have these kinds of connections, not every time, but in a lot of cases like that, it wasn't like I was even really calling it in. It He came to me and shared that. And I was open enough to receive it and to allow, and it wasn't like a dialogue so much of this um, super consciousness that goes on for me, it's not dialogue. It's pure consciousness that I'm allowing. Mm -hmm. it, it's information that information and energy that exists omnipresent is omni available for those of us who are developing our capacity to accept and allow it and to welcome it. It's there. This is not left brain activity. So this is what's so incredibly potent about this time that we're undergoing on earth right now. This evolutionary process is it's really about us moving beyond the limitations of left brain learning. And real spiritual progress is not something we learn through the brain. It's something we have direct experience with, not just through a brain, it is beyond the brain. It is so, it is so fully, holy, and completely available to us on so many multi-sensory levels beyond physicality that when that starts to happen, there is we're unifying, at least this is how it's happening for me. And I, I know that this is the experience that we unify beyond beyond brain, beyond even emotions, beyond heart beyond physicality to a space of knowing, experienced and direct knowing. Mm -hmm. And when those things happen, there's no, there's no debate or argument. It's the, it's, it's the richness of the experience that is so real, so whole. We know we come into a kind of alignment with source and its infinite consciousness that's what's there. So that's kind of what was happening in that Samadhi experience. I was just connecting with the soul strand of my brother's consciousness. Mm -hmm. And who else of the unseen do you connect with on the regular? Yeah. Who, who are so, your people or beings or energies or collectives? Yeah. I love that question. So for me, I channel a group called the collective, but to me, there's an, almost no one in the non-physical, in terms of beings who have remained intact in terms of their consciousness that I can't connect with. So what do I mean by that? Ascended masters, angels, angel guides, angel healers, you know, there's all kinds of choirs of angels, um, animal kingdoms, individuals, collectives, planets, planetary bodies, even weather patterns. There's consciousness in everything everywhere. And when we're talking, if I'm connecting with any individual or collective group in any moment of time and space. It's just a matter of lining up or energetically attuning to that frequency where the consciousness of those beings or that collective exists. So does that make sense? And I think it does to you, right? So the old school channeling, what I call old paradigm channeling, old 3D channeling or old paradigm channeling is where, and there's nothing wrongness, there's no wrongness, it's just that's what was needed in that old paradigm in, in a sense, was you kind of had to give up a part of your sovereignty, the right to your own body and mind in a sense, and let some other being, more or less, or collect or subcollective or collective, come in and in a sense take over. And that's all that's what we call like an altered state consciousness, right? An altered state channeling. And in that, you're giving up a piece of your sovereignty and you're essentially trusting that that being is who they say they are. I have found over the years that a lot of people think that they're channeling a being who maybe they're not. And I'm not trying to discredit that. I'm just saying that that's old school. For me now, I had in my early days, years, years in the early days of beings coming to me and say, can I come in? Can I speak through you? And I'd be like, no. Like, no, you're not hijacking my body. No, I'm not giving you sovereignty. No, I'm not giving you the right to take over my body, my voice box. And so after years and years of this happening and just working on clearing all of my own energetic patterns that sort of 
locked me into what I call the, the, the lower or denser frequencies, I eventually realized that I was so clear energetically that it became very easy for me to just merge in a sense, not that I was giving up my individual identity, but I could just merge in consciousness at any frequency with any being, as long as my, my caveat is that they have to be of the light. And what that means is, and we can bring in information on this to help people better understand, but what that really means is that they're in service to the evolution of humanity, to the expansion and upliftment of humanity. They're in service and contribution in some way to expanding and elevating consciousness and overall light, lightness on earth, rather than uh, what we call that which is of the dark, which some people might think that means evil, but it's not necessarily the case. But it the dark is the contracted experience, which generally is more of restriction, contraction, limitation, lack. The tools of the dark very often are tools associated with secrecy, coercion, manipulation, deceit, because it's done in the dark, right? It's done in the shadows typically, but not always. So does that make sense? 100%. And I yeah. will say that to your point, what's really interesting to me is that I, because of what I do, and people pitch me a lot, I am so fortunate to be on the front lines of these new up and coming people. So for instance, there's a 28 year old uh, African-American gal out there. I mean, she's young and she's channeling and exactly what you're saying. She is not allowing something to occupy her. She is, um, she's lucid in a way, but what comes through her is like, it's amazing. It's yeah. beautiful. It's beautiful to see how this technology, if you will, has advanced so much and that the people who are doing it, such as yourself, that, you know, you're still aware you're not vacating. Yeah. And do you still, I know in your bio, it said, and I know this about you, when you are a Maui, which is now quite some time ago, you had an induction abduction experience. Do you currently still have contact experience with extra it's always a, a loaded thing to say extraterrestrials because what does that mean right because it's so much deeper than that but i think you get the gist of what i'm asking yeah well so again i want to just re restate there's lots of um star family races and then you have to me extraterrestrials are beings who typically are more aligned with the dark that's just the way i terminology terminate you know use the terminology in what i've been you know, there's fleet lots of fleet and the ones who are in service to the light and in support of humanity's growth and evolution and expansion, those beings are ge ge like generally benevolent. Those beings I have contact with. Yes. Beautiful. However, so is that te telepathically? Is that, yeah. like, how does that manifest? Sometimes they're part of the team that comes in. So whenever I'm channeling, if I'm channeling, it's really um, whoever's meant to ask, answer a question or whoever's you know, coming forward for any kind of group dynamic or private, you know, channeling, it could be someone from the fleet who serves the light. I just know my processes, I'm only allowing beings in who serve the light, who serve, you know, the one true divine source that is in service and contribution to humanity's evolution and expansion. Right. And so, yeah, there's lots of beings like that star. I call them star family races. So my, my first contact experience, I'll just share a little bit more since you asked. While I was living in Maui, I was meditating every night. I was working with a teacher who was teaching me how to do, how to work with energy and how to still the body and how to create like a, you know, a, a willed near, a near death experience type of experience to leave the body at will. And, um, so he would teach me, you know, he would teach us the class to meditate through the night. I lived in Maui on a golf course. And so I would stay up all night on the golf course, meditating on the porch. And at one particular, this one particular night, you know, I was completely lucid. I, my eyes opened, I opened and I saw, you know, a ship and that ship was just very low to the ground doing like a circling. And 
this was all, this was so long ago. I really didn't know back then, like anything about extraterrestrials or anything. And I just remember I was already very telepathic. I was already communicating with people who had crossed over and animals. And I just remember having the thought, thinking it and projecting it like effortlessly, like, oh, wow, you're here to help us. <laughs> if there's anything I can do to help, let me know. Like that was it. And then I was just instantly, I guess the best word is teletransported on ship. It was a very altered state. And yet I was fully coherent. It wasn't physical, like this kind of physicality. It's what I call like, um, etheric, like it was real physical in a different kind of energetic state. And, um, yeah, I had like free movement on the ship. I, I sort of got to know certain beings. I sort of knew them, but didn't know them in the years since I've unpacked it. I understand it a lot more. It went by in minutes, although it, I don't even know what the time was, but I did have some kind of like implant. I remember years after like the next day being furious about that. It took me a long time to unpack all of that. And for weeks, maybe longer afterwards, I was getting what I call these downloads that were like vision. I need to adjust this, this lighting in here. I'll yeah, do that in a moment. Thing. But, yeah. I'm sorry about that. I wasn't prepared for that, but, um, you know, I was getting these downloads of like symbols and signs. I didn't know what any of it was. And I was frustrated and angry. And I'd be like, what is this? And what does all this mean? And what is this thing in my arm? And all that was making me so angry. But it took me a long time to work through that. And I get it. Like it was always, you'll know when the time comes. So now I get it. I really understand that I was being, I, I call myself a braided star seed which means a part of my soul's consciousness is linked to those star family races that I met with on ship. There were multiple races on that particular experience. And that that part of me was merging that part of my consciousness and unifying with this soul strand that knows itself as Lori Spagna and anchoring in some of that, con a lot of that consciousness and energy so that I can bring it into physical form. Does that make sense? Of course it does. Yes, yep. a thousand percent. Oh, lucky you. And I want you to go ahead and fix your light. Yeah, let me just, I'm sorry. I'm going to just two you seconds. You do your thing. And I'm going to, I, I, I'm just going to do some patter here, which is from my years of being a singer, <laughs> being on stage where you basically means you speak between songs. And I just want to share with people that I recently had the great fortune. Uh, there's a very, very famous artist out there who does galactic portraits. And for years, she's impossible like to get a portrait from. She's that popular. But I'm very fortunate. I have a friend who happens to be a good friend of hers. And he promised a year ago, he would remember whenever her her book, her scheduling became free for the next slew of people to come in. And God bless him, a year later, he remembered. He reached out to her. He reached out to me. He connected us. And it took many months. I She doesn't know anything about me. I never met her. She's in another country. And I was very curious. I, of all the gabillion beings, I could have been an insect. I could have been a fish being. I could have been a particle. I could have, you know, I could have been a galaxy. But I, I'm sure most people aren't that shocked. She did a portrait of me as a lioness. And it, it's breathtaking. There's mm -hmm. so much energy, palpable energy in this portrait. And the way this artist, I think, is so brilliant that, you know, and this uh, lioness has a hood on and you can see this blue some kind of gem or technology here in her third eye. And you can see right here at the top of her uh, robe is a star. And I wanted so much to pull off her hood and see the rest of her. I wanted to touch her, you know, and she had technology on her chest. It almost looks like claw marks, but the artist told me, no, it's more like mercury, but it's some kind of sacred technology. And she said everything about this being had to do with sound and frequency and healing, but so, uh, I don't know to use the words. I mean, her words were much better, but let's just say so in command of these things. They were so 
indigenous to the lioness that she could affect entire locations and environments and situations. And I mean, I thought this is wild. This woman doesn't know. I've been a singer my whole life. She, she doesn't know the ways that I play with frequency and music and sound and all of it. So I just want to fill that in. And I, by the way, I'd love to post it, but the artist warned me, if you do, people are going to steal it and you'll find it all over social media and websites. And I, I can't, it's too, it's a little too special for that. But I think when I do presentations, I'll have it, you know, somewhere in there when I talk about star seeds. So mm -hmm. There is my patter, and that is my beautiful, I'll say the artist's name, Vashta, portrait. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing, right? The gifts, this is the thing is, we don't, we've been living in an old paradigm. Humanity's been living in an old paradigm, and so we're not really realizing, most of us yet, how much magnificence we have to bring forward. We have so much, and what you're describing, this incredible artist who's obviously highly gifted, we, within us, we have such magnificence within us, so much brilliance that's beyond anything we've been experiencing up until now. And it's up to us to cultivate it, to make space for it to come through, because it is the divine revealing itself through us. And the way that we allow that to happen is by diligently discipling ourselves to a practice where we essentially clear, heal, transmute, release, and resolve all of the aspects of ourselves, and I know you know this, like that are called ego or egoic construct. Personally, I don't, I'm already like at this point, I really, it turns my stomach when people say they have an ego because that's not actually true. That's a false belief. And all that is, is energetics that are, that are basically um, inertia energy that is stored in different parts of the brain, such as the amygdala, the hippocampus, and various energetics in not only in the chakra system, in the fascia, within the physical form, in the energetic form, but in the multidimensional layers. So this inertia is what people are identifying as themselves, and it's just simply not true. And they mm. call it their ego. And it's old school teachings. It's not even true. Interesting. So, because it's not the truth of who we are, right? The truth of who we are is that we are the divine embodied, remembering ourselves and reconnecting with our source, the infinite source that is infinitely available to us. And that that source can't really fully, wholly, and completely come through us if we're carrying all this inertia and density that allowed us to experience the game of duality, right? In that old paradigm that we've been living in, operating in the I, me, mine, me, 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 me game. So the new game that we're elevating ourselves into, in a sense, that we're birthing ourselves into is, a, and you know, this is a game of us, we, and ours, where we start really connecting with the oneness in within each of us and recognizing that that is within everyone. And that is where our brilliance and our magnificence comes through, these incredible gifts. And whether we identify as star seed or from a planet or this planet or all of those identifications, like even with my own star seed, you know, identification, I know that that is not the ultimate truth of who, who I am. That is still an identification that the ultimate truth of who we all are is this is aspect to source that vibrates energetically to a frequency that feels right and appropriate for each of us where the brilliance and the magnificence of the divine can reveal itself through us. Make sense? Yummy. Uh, I know you have this ability amongst many other gifts that you can and have always been able to communicate with animals. I um my dog is here with us right now. I think your dog is there with you. And I've always said if I if I could if I could come back, I want to be Shelby, my dog. 
I love her. I, I'm blown away by who she is, how constantly joyful and happy and like amazing, outgoing and all of this. And there was this TV show. I really can't wait for the next season. I think there's been at least three seasons that I've watched. It's called His Dark Materials, based on some phenomenal books, which I also read. And in the series, every person has something called the daemon. Um, I actually, it's an English word. I actually think it's demon, but we associate demon with devil, but that's not what they mean. Daemon, demon means their literal soul and their soul is an animal form. So mm. if, a, if a person dies, their animal dies. If their animal dies, they die, that kind of thing. They can't be separated. And so do you meet people? Because I feel like Shelby is my literal soul. I do. Mm -hmm. She feels like it's such a deep connection. I've never had that with an animal before. And she is my first dog. Mm -hmm. Do you meet other people who feel like they're so blown away by their beloved animal that they have that level connection and desire to be them or that is somehow an expression of them in a different way? Yeah, because we're, we're first we're there's we're soulmates. So the animals are, this is how I understand it from animals. They're a unique thread of soul lineage, the animal lineage. It's not like they can't cross over. I know animals who do and have to human form, but we're still in soul family connections because ultimately what we have is these, some people call them over souls, but really you have an eternal ever being, each being, all of us. And the eternal ever being is the aspect that, created us as individuals, knows you as an individual, you know, knows your animal as an individual created it's aspect of creator, right? So that eternal ever being fractaled off into many souls. And those souls aren't limited to just an your it's your soul family. So you travel, all of us travel with our soul families from incarnation to incarnation, lifetime to lifetime, experience to experience. And we interact over and over again, and we're in love. And it's true that there are cases where animals can become humans and humans can become animals. It's just not typically as frequent, but soul family, yes, totally. It's your soul family. It's your soulmate. Shelby's yeah. your soulmate. Totally. hundred percent. It is such a beautiful thing. Um, I know we talked about you channeling on the show and bringing some messages forth, obviously, from benevolent beings. So are there uh, star races or others in the non-physical realms who would like to come forward? And if so, just let me know how this works for you. Um, <laughs> can they feel like that? The, just can they suss out the energy and say, we really want to share this. And we have some profound messages for those who are listening live and those who are going to listen to the replay and those who are going to watch the YouTube shorts and all of that. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. And let me just say too, I just want to, since we, we sort of started talking about that, some of the beings in my, I'll, sometimes they call them my divine entourage. Sometimes they call themselves the contingency, but overall they refer to themselves as the collective. And the reason they say that is because over the years of working with so many beings, in the early days, I would always like identify. That was how I started discerning in a way, identify yourself before you come into my, my, my group. And I got very good at discerning and developing that ability to know who's speaking who's sharing, who, you know, what's this frequency? And after a while, it was like, okay, can you just call us the collective? Because it takes more time to identify and tell everybody, like I can do it in an instant now. So just know you, you, a lot of times they do identify. Sometimes they just come through as a collective, but overall divine goddesses, ascended masters, angelics. And one other thing I'll just say is that in all of my groups and on my retreats, I'll teach people, and this is a really good tool to learn. It's a practice that, where you can share who stands with you, who stands with you. Now, if you learn this practice, beings will light up. You'll be able to see just by learning how to ask and see. You need to be able to see with your extrasensory abilities. 
But it's such a great tool because when you start developing that capacity, you will have, in addition to other capacities, the ability to discern who stands with the person, who's really coming through. And this is a beautiful gift, right? To be able to know. But in any case, let's let's bring through. And if I may, I just want to say, I feel like you're always channeling because, or activating maybe is more appropriate, but because I'm so sensitive the whole time we've been talking, I just really feel you over here. Um, very beautiful. And it's like this constant receiving. So thank you. That's awesome. I love that you're noticing that because that is true. That's one of the things that I'm always really developing within my own self is to bring forward the energy that's meant, that's good, right, and appropriate at any point in time and space, that that energy is what's meant to come through. So that's beautiful because I know you're sensitive and that you're picking up on it and noticing it in a conscious way. I'm swimming in it right now. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Okay. Good. So you can ask any question you want, but there is a collective here. Let's just bring, yes, I'll, I'll allow. Greetings and blessings. Yes, we are identifying here now as this collective, as has already been stated. We are many who serve the light. We circulate with this one frequently, often, and whenever she is able to share in a public way or with any others who will benefit, it is our great pleasure to contribute and share. Let us begin with this. Since we know that this is the current climate on your earth and that many will appreciate this knowledge, and though it has been said in many ways, it will be said again in a new way here now. Your humanity is shifting from something you have been experiencing for hundreds of thousands of years into something brand new. And this brand new experience is so far beyond anything you in physical form in your current levels of consciousness have experienced. And in fact, even beyond anything that has been experienced ever on your earth plane, that you are creating it in a sense as it is being brought through. Now, this is to say this, what we are asking you to do is to recognize that nothing from the old that is undesirable to you, unenjoyable to you, need be brought into your future. No truths that you have believed to be true or thought to be true are absolutely true. You must begin to know absolute truths for the age you are shifting into will require truth, fact from fiction, and at the same time will be always illuminated with your consciousness. For here is absolute truth. You and all beings are consciousness embodied. Consciousness needs no thought to create. It simply needs and requires awareness and truth. When the two are combined, and know this, please, let us, let us add this now. Truth does not exist in the brain. Truth does not exist even in the mind. Truth exists beyond the physical realm. It is utilized by the brain, by the mind. The mind is a tool to utilize it. However, truth is known and absolute beyond the brain and beyond the mind. So you must begin in your future, must is an operative word, but nonetheless, you must use your ability to harness and access truth, absolute truth, with your consciousness that simply has awareness of infinite potential and with your intention and desire to create collaborate and participate in entirely new experiences that are more to your liking. You see, this is where the new paradigm is going. It will be based in a higher consciousness, creating experiences. And yes, it is true that all experiences have already been created. All experiences that ever been have ever been created, ever will be created, are already created. However, when we use the word creation in this moment of time and space, we are referring to your role as creators of your experience. So therefore, you will use your mind, your, your brain, your heart, all of your capacities, your consciousness in the physical to create experiences that are desirable to you, that are to your liking, and that are based in absolute truths beyond the potentials that you have previously believed were possible for you. And these potentials will be to your great liking, to your great excitement, to your great 
enthusiasm, to your greatest potential, to your magnificence, to your brilliance, etc. You see, but what must be revealed to your own self is the potentials that you are yet unaware of. And in order to do this, you see, you must begin to recognize, and we bring this forward for the topic of your conversation, of your unique radio programming, your podcast, is dare to dream. So we are inviting you all to dare to dream beyond the potentials that you currently think are possible or have previously thought were possible and to open up to the potential of not limiting them. You see, divine truth will allow you to have the awareness that something is possible that you cannot yet currently fathom, that perhaps you have never fathomed, perhaps you never even believed was possible, and that you allow Because in the new paradigm, your experiences will be created from a place of potential, curiosity, pioneering. This is not just exploration. This is pioneering entirely new ground where you allow for potentials to be created through your consciousness simply by opening up and allowing the divine to reveal itself through your physical earthly experience. This is where you are headed. And so let us say that while you are witnessing old paradigm structures, organizations, groups, and in some cases, physical locations, and in other cases, physical embodiments, while you are witnessing much of that collapse, please have no dismay. Please recognize that that which is collapsing is that which is no longer aligned with where humanity is going. And we tell you that humanity is going into a future that is very desirable for all of you, very much to your liking. We would also like to say that as you witness your own selves struggling, frustrated, fearful, concerned, worried, know that those are energetics that also will best be released. Place your divine knowing into this future that is here now and already available as you expand into and allow it to be birthed through you. We will pause here for now, for we know much has been stated. Thank you so much. And I am thrilled to hear what you are sharing with us I study shamanism specifically with the Peruvian Inca Quero people, and they have something called the Pachacuti. A Pachacuti comes every 500 years. And the Peruvian people say from the Andes specifically that we are in a Pachacuti right now. It's not a myth. It is real. And that everything, um, it is going wrong to set the world right And that's literally what Pacha Kuti means. Pacha meaning time, earth or time, and Kuti meaning make things right. So that, yes, we're coming into a place of balancing the divine feminine with the masculine and where the north and south will come together, where we won't be as busy, et cetera. And also I want to bring to light here something very recent on April 25th, there was a miracle where there was the birth of a white calf buffalo. And the um, National Bison Association said it's so rare that it had a one in 10 million chance. And that connects with the significant prophecies of the Lakota people, the Comanches, the Navajo, et cetera, that they say when a white buffalo is born, it is a symbol of hope. It is about honoring that which is sacred. So I hear you saying that no matter what it looks like or what is coming up to be healed, that it is actually something that's needed to get us, to get earth, to get humanity, to where we really long to be more peaceful, more harmonious, more advanced than how we've been functioning. Is that correct? Indeed, this is so. And you utilize the word healing. And what we would suggest here is that while this is absolutely, we would say this is certainly true, we would add to this idea of healing the language of resolving. 
for, as you well know, there have been eons of time where issues have been cycling in perpetuity, perpetuating experiences over and over again without humans necessarily recognizing the patterns replaying over and over and over again. And so this healing is really a resolution so that the old patterns, regardless of what they are, come to a completion. And so when you see and perceive things as a wrongness in the world, it is simply because on a certain level, you are recognizing that a pattern is coming to a completion and that it is time for a completion of that which will not be brought forward in an elevated state to an elevated experience at a new frequency bandwidth where the density of those experiences that were the patterns repeating will have been resolved. You see, so healing, while it is oftentimes, oftentimes referred to as something to resolve in a physical way, healing, or even an emotional way, healing, or even a mental way, healing, what we are suggesting here, even beyond healing, is resolution. For when something is fully resolved, it never need be revisited again. There is no need for it. It is resolved. This is what humanity is doing. Now, what we would like to offer here that is quite challenging for many humans is that when their healings are coming up to be resolved, whether it is a physical issue, an emotional issue, a mental issue, an energetic issue, such as being uncomfortable in one's own body or uncomfortable in certain energies. This is all looking to be resolved. Now, when these issues come up, what typically happens with most humans is that they go into a state of resistance. They go into a state of struggle. This is being escalated in this particular calendar year of linear time so that people can become more aware of it so that they will be able to liberate themselves from it. However, the dynamic of the struggle and the resistance, which triggers further fear and anxiety, etc., that is very uncomfortable. And we understand this. However, the purpose is to ensure that it is resolved, that it is not bypassed. It cannot be bypassed bypassed. It cannot be overlooked. As you begin to cross, you, the collective of humanity, begins to cross over this threshold. And oftentimes the one who is utilizing her voice at this time refers to these as frequency fences. The evolution of humanity is elevating and must move beyond these frequency barriers, frequency fences. This evolution requires these issues to be resolved. And so the intensification that you are experiencing, which is very discomforting to you as a collective and as individuals, is forcing you to become conscious of that which you tolerated for far too long and were either unconscious of or only semi-conscious of, or perhaps even in many cases attempted to bypass it. This will not be tolerated in a sense, for as you move into this next evolution, as it is already happening, these frequencies that you are elevating into are much purer, purer. The old issues have been resolved. You see? Yes, absolutely. Can you tell us what is our dormant DNA and how does it help us to, how does it help us with spiritual advancement? How can we awaken and activate it? Okay. Do you want to, me to answer? I, I can answer this myself, right? Without going to alter state. Do you want me to go into alter state with this? I'll just go. I'll just bring this forward because I because this is like my my thing, right? So humans have all of us humans and animals. We have codes in the DNA, and we have lots of dormant DNA that's just not being utilized, right? But what we have is the solutions to humanity's issues lying dormant in our DNA. 
And each of us have the unique solutions that we are uniquely here to bring forward. So as we elevate the light that we're able to hold, and light is just energy, spaciousness, and these pure frequencies that we're you know, talking about here, um, more of the dormant DNA starts to get sort of triggered to turn on. And at the same time, simultaneously, we're healing and resolving the corrupted DNA. Corrupted DNA is stuff like um, old patterns of disease, you know, ancestral patterns of disease or inheritances that are that gear us towards like something we inherit that's unhealthy, right? Diabetes or breast cancer or anything like that. So those kinds of things are being resolved. Those are the corrupted strands, right? And I call them corrupted because it's not the truth of who we are. The truth of who we are is we're returning to our original divine blueprint. We're returning to ideal and optimal state of health and well-being, but not overnight, right? So the DNA has the potential not only to heal and resolve those corrupted parts of our DNA, but to also birth through the gifts we're meant to bring forward. So for example, and I hope it's okay that I, I think it's okay that I say this, I discovered in my own DNA, codes of immunity and imperviousness. And those what does that immunity, mean? What does that oh mean? My gosh. I've been activating codes of immunity and imperviousness in people for a long time, because once they get activated, you're a immu- you can be immune and impervious to harmful things falling from the sky, harmful things stuck into your arm, harmful things that you could breathe in, you know, so-called, you know, if it's okay if I say, you know, whatever is in the external world, you can become immune and impervious to something you used to think you were allergic to that you never could get an allergic to, you know, an allergic to, yes. but this is dormant potential. And it ha- you, you're, you have to be vibrationally compatible to accept, receive, and allow it. Because if some part of your unconsciousness says, oh no, we're not ready for that yet. This body can't handle it. This soul hasn't resolved this or that issue yet. Then it won't be activated. It's an organic kind of process that happens naturally, organically, as each soul is ready, willing, able, and capable. But the way I discovered immunity and imperviousness was just before the year 2020. We know what that year was about, right? And I started offering it like on my YouTube channel and everywhere. And I was being told to start activating this. And it was maybe a couple of years even before that. I was activating it for everyone, not entirely knowing what was ahead right? But imagine if everybody understood that you can be immune and impervious, then you don't even need something like that to teach you some kind of lesson about immunity and imperviousness, right? Does that make sense? I know exactly. Yes. Thank you. What a beautiful gift. What a beautiful gift, especially we're living in very toxic environments. I'm in Los Angeles. I'm in a city where, you know, you know what it's like. And so, yes, this is like a powerful tool. Um, and so it sounds like there's DNA activation, there's immunity activation, and these are things that you can do for people and for groups. Is that correct? Yes. Oh yeah. I do this on all my retreats and in my sacred visionary mentorship. And so one of the other things we can do, not only with the DNA, but just when, we, when we're energetically aligning, coming into alignment is we can synchronize and harmonize lifetimes. We know this from physics, right? We exist in parallel realities. That's not like woo-woo, that's physics. So there's a difference between chemistry and physics. Chemistry is my body has the immunity to something in the physical world. My body knows how to create that immunity organically. I can live free from any kind of fear and still have discernment not to stick terrible things into myself that aren't good for me. Okay. Or not to stand, you know, whatever. But, But the physics is that we exist in our consciousness exists in other parallel realities that are running concurrently. And so that means you in other lifetimes or parallel realities have all kinds of wisdom, tools, gifts, awarenesses, lessons that you learned, gifts of consciousness that you claimed, things you mastered, 
And when you're ready, those are stored in the DNA as well. They're not just stored in the DNA, they're stored in consciousness. So when you start to align with energetic frequency, you can access your gifts from those lifetimes as well and bring them into this lifetime. And by the way, I was going to tell you about that earlier when we were talking about the shaman thing. Well, I can share more about that later, but still, nonetheless, you can also benefit yourself in other lifetimes. So let's say you're in a parallel reality, you know, where some version of you is solving world problems that you don't even know about. You can help yourself in other realities and other people too. This is what I'm saying. We have so much potential once we start more fully aligning with the wholeness of who we are. So much Something at our fingertips to access that would create influence. See, I love this idea so much. It's like, you know, down to the, just me, you, any one level, no one actually needs suffer because the help out there directly with people with you and from ourselves, that there is no past. You can organically create your past based on who you are now or who you prefer to be. And there are concurrent, beings of each of us out there living other lives and the influence we can take specifically from those who are being very successful. And I like the notion, if there is some place where there's some struggle to ask that being lifetime, just, you know, bring it on over. I would like some of that, please. Let's yeah. let bring some of that influence to me. Yeah. I mean, you can heal and resolve things for other versions of you too. See, because all aspects of you, as you come more and more into oneness, all aspects of you benefit. This is part of how the domino effect works, because even though we're still functioning from individuation, we still get to play in the game of duality. That's not going away. But here's duality at its finest. Here's duality. Here's an example of duality in its like most magnificence. Do I want a rose or do I want a palm tree? Like that's still duality, right? <laughs> right. We're still going to have duality. What we're shifting into is the elimination of pain and suffering and the, the elimination of what's called evil. And evil is mm -hmm. the attempt to usurp people's free will mm -hmm. through various forms of manipulation, secrecy, coercion, division, et cetera. So that is what's being eradicated. And evil is the attempt to, to keep people in a state, whether it's us doing it to ourselves, which ultimately in a way it is, um, or whether it's some other, any other group, organization, religion, whatever, it's the attempt to keep people not only in a pain of suffer pain and suffering, but to keep them in a state of unconsciousness and keep them stuck in the game of duality. That does not allow them to expand, up-level, prosper, grow, and evolve. So that's what's being eradicated. And that's why we're seeing with clear eyes now, like various kinds of corruption and greed being exposed, et cetera, and some horrific things, because that's what's being eradicated. Well, yeah. It's not overnight, but yeah. You know. I was thinking while you were talking about this manipulation and how we have free will, I was thinking, oh, that's like the original sin. When you think back 450,000 years ago in the Anunnaki coming here, right? Looking for gold for monatomic climate reasons and, and thinking, oh, we can manipulate the strands of DNA and we can create a labor race to do right, our exactly. bidding, right? That is a, that's exactly it. That's exactly old forms of evil that's being eradicated. Right. right. Still perpetuated, but its time has come. But and let me tell you what, pe what people don't understand. People who are still playing on those timelines, they don't understand. So timeline is an experience. Timeline is a chosen set of experiences that one experiences in a game in a way as linear. So the timeline that some people are on right now, based on their frequency bandwidth, the energetic field that they're playing in, is there's still all this, you know, terrible negative alien agenda going on. And right. I get it. They're playing there because it's not resolved for them yet. They're playing in the game of extreme, um, you know, conspiracy game, for example. I'm not saying that's not real. I'm saying that you're on a timeline because you haven't resolved it yet, whoever the person is or the people. And until they can resolve it or somehow recognize that it's no longer serving them. Mm -hmm. It really isn't. 
it's not a necessary timeline anymore. You can start elevating yourself up out of that, freeing and liberating yourself from any timeline that you're experiencing that is no longer to your liking, recognizing that the way to, do you know how to collapse the timeline? No, tell us. The way to collapse the timeline is to pull all of your energy and consciousness out of it. It can only survive with energy and consciousness, with consciousness, you giving your life force to it. So it's not that the timeline isn't there. It's that if your consciousness isn't there, if you're not participating on it, and if eventually nobody's participating on it, the timeline collapses. Now it becomes a wave. It's still energy. Consciousness is still there. It's just not participating in a physical way. Does that make sense? My God, I feel like we have to like, I feel like I'm at this delicious buffet. <laughs> you just gave us like some lobster and I just <laughs> digested like for that. a minute. That's amazing. But I, I got to ask you to say it again, because I really want us all just the germane point to understand how to collapse a timeline. I feel like this is so important. We could change people's lives right here. You can change your life if you get this concept. I will put it in layman's terms. There's something that's presenting in your experience that you don't like. Let's just, let's use a very layman term, an animal's being abused. Oof. Or you're getting triggered by some message you keep getting, like go get breast cancer checkups. Now, I'm not telling you to deny breast cancer checkup. If that's what you feel that you need. I'm not telling you to deny that animals are abused. What I'm saying is the way you could collapse that timeline is by saying, I recognize that that exists. And here's what I'm choosing instead. And here's where I'm going to put all my energy and consciousness so let's say on the timeline where you're experiencing the potential of looking for breast cancer, looking at breast cancer, you get on that timeline, there's some fear, there's some worry, there's some doubt. Oh my God, is something wrong? The energetic there is what's holding it in place. Mm -hmm. So this other parallel timeline that you decide you're going to be on is, you know what? I know I'm fine. I'm going to love and honor my breasts. I'm going to behave as they're healthy, strong, alive, and well, and I'll take appropriate action, whatever feels right for me. It's a subtle shift in energy and consciousness there. Now, for someone else who's already mastered that, they might just say, eh, not interested. Not having it. It's that easy. But if you haven't mastered it, you can't just go, eh, not interested. Let's do the one with the animals because there's so many animal lovers, right? You know animals are being abused and you don't want that anymore. Now you have an option in this timeline. Am I going to post about the horrific things? Am I going to make people aware? Am I, what am I going to do to show and demonstrate how horrible this is? Or are you going to pivot slightly to, I'm going to bring in a new energy that's all about recognizing animals are sentient beings worthy and deserving of being treated with respect and dignity. And that if I want, and we want more respect and dignity on this planet in honor, that we need to become that, right? That's what humanity is doing right now. And there's even enough, another level where you start living at a frequency where you're at one with animals and you start recognizing them as sentient and you start glorifying them in every way imaginable. And you start teaching and sharing about the consciousness of animals and how aware they are, how sentient. And you start contributing more and more onto that timeline and inviting more and more people into that and withdrawing your focus from the negative stuff happening because you recognize you can't stop that at that timeline but you can collapse it as much as you can by withdrawing from it and entirely invoking your energy to the best of your ability into a timeline reality where the animals are being treated as sentient with respect dignity and honor and you're fully holy and completely to the best of your ability participating in that experience and inviting more people in yes and you know yeah. it's amazing because people who are listening or watching Maybe some are thinking, yeah, but isn't that imagination? But no, it's all it's imagination anyway. Well, <laughs> I want to, it's it so up. much more than imagination. 
Okay. This is this is why the if a person is entirely in their left brain, that's what they're going to think. This is the problem with old paradigm, new paradigm. Mm -hmm. This is the problem with 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 what's gone on, in my opinion, because our whole society has been trained to learn everything through the brain. And so the moment you hear something like what I'm saying, suddenly it's like imagination. No, once you start energetically, vibrationally shifting the physical experience to a whole new frequency, this is not something that can be learned through the brain. This okay. is something that is so experiential. The energy becomes so wholly and completely moved in you and through you that you become the embodiment of the experience on the new timeline. Lori, I like this so much. It's making me crazy. It really is like, this is so amazing. It's actually mind blowing in a way. And I in just- a, In a great way. In a great way. Because it's yeah. available to all of us. We don't have to go to the mountaintop like I did. I went to Maui thinking like, I have to go to the mountaintop to meet God. Like that was why I went there, right? No, but you don't have to do that. It's about becoming vibrationally compatible. This cannot be learned in a book. And basic meditation and basic visualization, it's not going to do it. I'm sorry. Breath works, awesome. Somatic stuff, it's all awesome. Part of it, but not going to do it. This is a whole new way of going so deep into union with source that through that union with the source of the infinite all that is, you start recognizing that your energetic frequency and vibration is literally creating contributing to a whole new timeline experience. Other people may already be having it too, but you're the one paving the way. This is what we all have within us. It is an experience that we can cultivate, learn, and grow, but it's not through the left brain. It's not through old school teachings. Those are ways to help us get to, they've gotten us this far. This is a whole new thing. It's oh available God. to us. It's not, it's not impossible. It's just a whole new way of doing and being. And our original divine blueprint and the 5D templates, what are they? What are, what are those? And what are our operating systems? Yeah. The original divine blueprint for humans is, it's also called the Adam Cadman body, right? It is, it is the, a body that does not get ill or have disease or decay. It is a body that is restored to its eye, restored for those of us, but future generations will be born with it. Restored to its ideal and optimal state of health and well-being without unnecessary aging. It'll be just natural and organic and always operating in its ideal and optimal way. Those codes need to be reactivated. And it's not something you do just once. You have to live it. Like you have to start really working with it and cultivating it. And what was the second part of your question, Debbie? Oh, um, that's so cool. Oh, um, 5D blueprint. Is that what you yes, asked? 5D yeah. templates, operating systems. 5D original, templates. Those are just codes in the blueprint. DNA, right? Those are codes in the DNA that can be activated that help you start living. 5D is the new paradigm, right? So we talk about 5D and I've been teaching about this for years. 5D is just languaging for you know, I call it dimensional bandwidths, but what is it? It's vibrational frequencies. So if someone in old paradigm, the easiest example, and I know you know this, right, is, you know, someone's operating from a place of stress and anxiety and like, like worry and doubt and fear, like this is their frequency, whether they see it or not, like, right. And they're walking around and it's nervous and, you know, you get near, and then this new frequency bandwidth of 5D is more like, okay, you know, there's challenges, there's growth, there's learning, there's experience, and there's more, right? Beyond 5D is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, let's go way beyond that because once you get anchored into 5D where you're like, okay, I've got the physical experience. I'm no longer vibrating like somewhere in this density of pain and suffering and anxiety and fear and worry and doubt all the time. And we a little bit like, like do, 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 do all the time, right? Once you've got that resolved and you start integrating 4D, which is like higher consciousness, the non-physical, the expansion, the up level, you're like, okay, I'm a lot more than just that. You're healing, you're resolving things, you're, you're clearing your traumas, you're working, you're doing the introspection that is required for this journey, the deep inner introspection, which is, that's what blocks people, right? That's what really blocks people because they don't, 
they don't want to look at their own shadow. A lot of times they don't want to say, wow, I really was a jerk. I'm so sorry. I feel horrible about who I was. Like we have to reconcile with that. Right. But that's all for 3D, 4D, right? You start anchoring in 5D, new, this the beginning of the new paradigm. Then you start saying, what can I do now? What can I create? That's a whole new frequency bandwidth, but that's the codes, the 5D codes. You start recognizing you're moving beyond this. You're moving beyond this, like 3D, 4D. You're anchoring in a new paradigm. And now you're, you become the light for everyone else, mm -hmm. right? That's what you're doing. That's what I'm doing. That's what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. And we start literally start creating this new paradigm of, of like how much brilliance, magnificence, fabulousness is possible. We don't even know. Ah, yummy. I, you've written many best-selling books. One of them was manifest manifestation made easy. Do you have any new tools, new powerful tools in today's energy about money, wealth? Uh, when, yeah. And when I say abundance, you know, for everybody, it's not just for bringing in money, money, money. It's like everything. Abundance is everything. It's how we eat, how we love, how we travel, how we are in community, et cetera. So yes. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing is understand that manifestation is literally consciousness choosing and allowing your consciousness. I'm, we're all consciousness. So there's no, all this visualizing, all that stuff. It's almost a joke, right? This is what you do. You decide you want something, you choose it, you allow it. And then from that moment to the degree that you can have divine certainty, that that's all that's required. So every time you think about that thing, you're choosing and allowing, add some kind of energy such as, I'm excited, I can't wait. I wonder how it's gonna show up. I'm really looking forward to it. Divine excitement, divine enthusiasm. Oh my God, this is gonna be so wonderful. That's it. Now that might really be hard for people because if you're attached, let's say you wanna meet your divine soulmate, your partner, your love interest, or you wanna get a new job, or you wanna have more money come to you, or you want more abundance, whatever it is you want. If you've got an attachment and if that attachment is entangled with some kind of, is it possible? Is it possible for me? I don't know. Can I have it? Can I? Every time you go to that space, you've just nixed it, right? You're now in the struggle. So rather, if you can't go into that certainty of knowing consciousness thinks it, consciousness chooses it, consciousness allows it, the field responds, period. That's the way it works. But if you can't be at that frequency of knowing mm. divine certainty, then this is how you do it. Mm. You place what you want in your mind at some point in the future. Mm. It's okay. We're playing in the game of linearity. And because you, you know, you don't have to have it right this moment. So let's say you want a new house or you want new friends. You link it to something like, I'm going to have this you know, within the next six months, or I'm going to have this by the end of the year, I'm going to have this by the summer. And you start thinking about it with excitement. You're gonna have it. You're really excited. You don't know how it doesn't matter. As long as it's good and right and divinely aligned, or something along those lines, harm to none. Just get excited. It's going to be so awesome. It's going to be so fun. What's this house going to look like? Oh my God, you want windows? You want doors? You want ceilings? You want floors? You want a beautiful neighborhood? You want nice neighbors? You want nice white, whatever you want. Get excited. Just be excited. Just think about it with excitement. Don't worry about whether you're going to have it or not. Don't doubt. Don't disbelieve because this is law. This is the way the universe works. You get excited. Excitement is creation. You want to say thank you? Thank you for the excitement. Thank you that it's coming. Okay, do that. But do you want to doubt? Then you're playing in 3D. Doubt is for the game of 3D. Disbelief is for the game of uncertainty is for that game or even 4D. But you want to play in the new paradigm. You start knowing this is how it works. This is how it works. You, you get excited. You feel excited. You feel optimistic. You start imagining about it, thinking about it, just planning it without the attachment of when, because it's at some point in an undefined point, kind of with a slight, you know, yes. Okay. It's maybe six months away or within the next six months, whatever it is. So you don't have the exact attachment. 
just be excited. Yeah. Practice playing with the energy of excitement and certainty. Why certainty? Because you get to be certain when you understand that this is the way the universe works. Consciousness, which is who we are, mm -hmm. is responding to consciousness. Yeah. The field of consciousness is responding. So all you need to do as a creator of your reality, I'm saying you, but I mean all of us, is to be excited or put the energy that you desire most, which is some form of looking forward, gratitude, excitement, optimism, et cetera. You attach that to the very thing you're conscious of or about, a new house, whatever, new soulmate, new partner. Put that energy into it. And then uh, refuse to allow yourself to fall back into the game of 3D where everybody's uncertain and doubtful. That's just, that's old paradigm energetics. Yes, you One know. Other piece. Okay, please. Okay. Sorry. I was like, one other piece I would add is that while you're going about your life, more and more become, you have to become that. You have to become the person that you want to attract if it's a soulmate, right? This is like very basic. If you want to attract someone, like if you want to attract people into your life who are kind and loving, you need to be kind and loving, right? Like you can't attract kind and loving if you're not nice to people. And if there's people in your life who aren't nice, you need to look within yourself. How, what is it within me that's attracting this? That's collaborating with this experience on this timeline. So if you want a beautiful house, you need to become the person who lives in that beautiful house. If you want to have a beautiful partner, you need to become the person who has, who is loving and kind and whatever other qualities, virtuous qualities. We need to, that is one, that's a whole nother conversation that we need to cultivate within ourselves, the virtuous qualities that we desire to have in our experience. Mm. Lovely. Absolutely. I concur so much with what you're saying. And I've had pivotal moments in my life where I've just organically used these. Um, specifically, one of them is when I was looking at a pattern over and over and going, oh, why? And then I'm like, well, okay, obviously, what's the common denominator? Uh, me, right? I'm the one going to all these parties, experiencing this situation, meaning over and over. And that's when I went, you know what? I'm done. I'm complete. Thank you so much. And it, everything actually changed in that moment. I'm really so proud of myself for that because that was a big for one. You. Yeah. I'm proud of you too. Good Thank for you. you. It's not easy to see a pattern and be like, yeah, done, complete. Thank you. I bless you. Let's move on. Like done. Uh, you know, it's Good just, you. it's the basis of, of projection. It's the basis of shadow work. And it's the thing most of us don't want to look at because it's so much easier to blame everything out there or a particular person or situation. But I know enough. I mean, I've been around long enough. And when something persists and doesn't change, it's exhausting. And so I was either going to keep living in that discomfort or I was going to really take a look at myself. And mm -hmm. so that was a better option. That felt mm -hmm. much more productive because I can affect change at my level. And the other yeah. thing I was thinking about listening to you, Lori, is, you know, I come from, I, I came, yeah, I came from, especially in my mother's light, like a lot of financial worry. And so I was very good at emulating that. And oof, it's, oh, by the way, I'm just feeling that energy again, which I've not felt in a long time, mm -hmm. but that was a lot, like a lot. So people who worry about finances, it's like, oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. It's a lot. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And and I got also to a place with that because again, what did it change? <laughs> Nothing. What did it do? Very debilitating on every level to live mentally, physically, emotionally through that. And so I got to a point where I'm like, I am always taken care of. Mm -hmm. Wow. What a game changer. Because living from that perspective and I, you know, then there are moments you might call them a test, but I didn't see it as such where lucrative, lucrative. And, you know, there was a dip and I could have gone into, oh, you know, that old energy. And it's just like, oh no, I'm always taken care of. It's coming. It's coming. I just don't know from where. And of course, 
It always does. It always did. And it's such a chill place to live from of knowing that the divine has many jobs and that's one of them. Take care of me, you know, make sure I'm okay. Bring the right people, right circumstances. Yes. It's lovely. You, we were, see, this is part of, this is part of the new paradigm is recognizing that we're connected to an infinite source. We're all not just connected part of we're the embodiment of this source. And this source has put us in this form for reason. So it will support us wholly and completely in being here in whatever we need. And our job is just to be in the energetic of allowing it, allowing just allowing it. And, and so people can find you at Lori Spagna, S-P-A-G-N-A. It's Lori, L-O-R-I, Lori Spagna.com. What do you have going on that people will want to know about? Well, the biggest thing is I'm about to launch um, a new energy workers group where we're learning to work with energy and use energy in the new paradigm. It's a mentorship program. I do have a year long sacred visionary mentorship program, which is really deep um, training and practice and all the areas of developing intuition, learning to use and apply energy and metaphysical tools and consciousness um, and bring it into this physical world. And, And of course we include healing and resolving traumas and wounds and, and unhealthy or unwanted or undesirable patterns that we just don't need anymore. Old aspects of what was identified at once as ego or egoic structure. Um, but, and I also do retreats. I'll be doing retreats over the summer, but yeah, they can find out about all of that. I have a podcast too called the awakened elevated human, and they can find out more there. And if they want free gifts or if they want to learn how to activate their dormant DNA, can I give some gifts? Is that all right? Yes, we love gifts. Yeah. So you can get a whole class and a series of activations, uh, DNA activations at lorispania.com forward slash free gifts forward slash DNA. You can also learn all about your star seed origins and the indigo family tribes and what we're doing here, um, how we're shifting humanity's consciousness for in service to the light at lorispania.com forward slash free gifts forward slash star seed. And if you want to help animals on a global scale and step into a new paradigm on that one, you can get so much magnificent, really high vibe consciousness uh, and gifts at lorispania.com forward slash free gifts forward slash animals. Oh, so nice. Thank you for that. And that's a great way for people who are enjoying you right now to even have a further deep dive with what's possible working with you. Yeah. And also so they can contribute, right? Because that's what we're, that is new paradigm. New paradigm is like, what is it that I have to contribute to this, this evolving humanity that's going to serve my source and serve the greater good of all. And I think that's why we're here. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, honey, I love you. Uh, You're so welcome. It's just great to hang out with you. And I can't wait to be on this cruise with you in December. I want people to know what are you going to be delivering? So just so folks know, the link is going to be in the show notes. Don't worry if you can't write all this down, including Lori's links. So Portal to Ascension, Galactic Origins Cruise in December to the Yucatan. You are one of the presenters. What are you going to be talking about, if you know? I Well, I am going to be, I will do some channeling there, but really I'm going to be providing people with the experience because we've been talking today about how this stuff can't really be learned through the left brain. It has to be directly experienced. And one of the things I pride myself on is helping people to get to a level, a depth of experience through their sacred heart center, through into the core, the depth and the core of their being, where they unify with their source, with the infinite, very quickly, very easily, incredibly enjoyably, fast, easy, amazing. So On that cruise, that's what I'm going to be offering is not only some channeled wisdom and guidance that will support the group and the dynamic of what's going on there, but an experience that will help people to get into their knowing through direct experience. 
Mm, thank you so much for channeling. Thank you for all you offered us today, including just the ongoing activation. This is Dare to Dream, Lori. What are you next, Dare to Dream? Future dreams and goals. Oh my goodness. My future dreams and goals. Number one is just that humanity on this evolutionary journey is up leveling at an accelerated pace that is still good, right, and divinely aligned. My truest desire also is for is to continue to, I love what I get to do. I just want to continue to be able to serve the light and source creator God in and my fulfill my role in God's plan of light of creation. And my other thing is to see in this lifetime animals recognized and treated as sentient beings. Yeah. Thank you, sister. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much, Debbie. Mm -hmm. Love you. I love you too. Bye, Emma, little puppy. And folks who want to join us, and we hope you do, we're excited to meet you in person aboard this extraordinary experience, the Galactic Cruise. This is going to be a seven-day adventure filled with land excursions. Just go to galacticoriginscruise.com. That's where the tickets are. Again, it'll be in the show notes. And I end today's show with this quote from Wendy Kennedy and the 9D Pleiadian Collective. You individually and collectively, have a tremendous amount of power to change the course of the collective trajectory. Try to shift your perspective of the moment and not get lost in the narrative being provided to you by others. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, your weekly Dare to Dream podcast. I am on all major podcast sites. You can watch the videos on Spotify or at youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Again, if you're on YouTube, sign up for the membership and check out the merch, merchandise, leave a comment and share. I love to hear from you guys. Next week on the show, I am featuring Maria Wheatley. She is an author. She's a second generation dowser and astrologer astrology master and a tarot master. Maria is a leading authority on the geodetic system of earth energies. Thank you guys so much for joining us on the show today. And remember, you can actually change your reality.